what can you tell us about the mall scene and the fact that they found an, an empty mall in 1979? There weren't there weren't very many empty malls I could think of. Right. So like the Stranger Things show, you know, posits this idea that was the peak of mall culture, probably late 70s, early 80s. And yeah, there weren't many dead malls because they were like a new thing, a new ish thing. Right. Dawn of the Dead and all that, you know, it, that was mall <laughs> culture. And because that's a dead mall. But um, yeah, they found a dead mall. Um, it had succumbed to crime. It was in a, a pretty high crime, low, you know, high poverty suburb. And so they built it all up and filled it up with real merchandise from real Chicago names. Like if you're from there, you recognize like R.J. Grunts. I mean, I, you know, and Bigsby and Crothers, those were local names. And then they just proceeded to destroy it all. Um <laughs> over several days of filming nobody really remembered exactly how many days but several days and i thought this was kind of amusing you know safety protocols were different in the 70s and yeah this is not to cast any aspersions i think this is was the case for all of these auteur filmmakers things were just looser then so they're inside this sealed up vault because it was a night it's supposed to be a night scene right so everything's sealed and there's like burning rubber and belching probably leaded gasoline exhaust and rotting vegetables you know because there's a jewel supermarket in there and they didn't change up the vegetables everything's rotting and so the place just reeked and was probably toxic so every like 15 minutes the whole crew would like <laughs> file outdoors and just <sighs> you know <laughs> fresh air um and it is to their great credit, there was no real injuries in that shoot, even though there's cars, real cars really speeding around. There's no CGI. Um, there's one shot. If you watch the scene where the guy says, do you have a Miss Piggy? And then the car bursts through. Right. And there's a, a really athletic black woman in like a red, I think she's in red slacks. And she kind of dives out of the way. That was like very close. I mean, you can tell. If you look closely, it'll make you shudder how close it was that she almost got clipped, but she didn't. And there was like one dude who had like one little tiny abrasion because he stepped in the wrong place. But other than that, it went pretty well, apparently. I've never heard of anybody. Nobody's come forward that I know of saying, oh, I got really, you know, banged up in that shoot. So it worked out in the end. The stuff of the mall, of course. But what about uh, some of the stunts in this movie? The one that gets that's gotten written about a lot since the film came, since the book came out is in Milwaukee, because I did a book talk at Boswell's Books in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. and they really loved the movie up there, and they really pride themselves that that one big scene was shot there, which is the road to nowhere. Yeah, the Nazis go off the edge of the uh, the edge of the road basically, and just yeah. fall. So that scene, the the road that ended, that was in Milwaukee downtown. I've been on that road. Um, and then them falling, the Nazi station wagon falling, that's the train. Uh, that was shot in Chicago along Lakeshore Drive where the S-curve used to be. And then the, the Nazis landing and like comically landing in the, in the pavement and falling through it. That was shot in Universal Studios in LA. Uh, but the Wisconsiners are really proud of, of their role in that scene. And, um, you know, that was a death-defying scene, in fact, um, the Bluesmobile, the stunt driver, uh, he did it too slow the first time. It didn't look convincing, so Landis wanted him to speed up. And then he did it a little too fast and went a little too far. And he ended up dangling over the edge. Um, and luckily, uh, nothing happened. He, they got caught on some, like, you know, those, like, steel rods, like iron rods that kind yeah. of... So nothing happened. But it could have could have fallen, like, probably hurt somebody. Um so, yeah, and all this was real. You know, there's no effect. I mean, the only quote-unquote effects were, like, in that goofy scene with, again, with where the Blues Brothers kind of vaults back and defies yeah. gravity. Yeah. That was, at one point in that shot, there's, like, a three-foot-long fake car that somebody literally threw. <laughs> <laughs> that was what passed for special effects back then. I was always taken by them dropping the pin off, too. Oh, that, and they dropped it. Yeah. feet or more. Um they used the Hancock building for, for perspective. I have a, I think I used that shot in the, in the photo. I hope you got, did you get the real book? You didn't. Yeah. Get, mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. You can see the picture. It's great. I mean, that was a beautiful shot. The, did, didn't Landis want to go what, up higher and they said, no, 1200 feet is enough. The, the, what Bob Weiss, the producer told me was Landis.
this he's a probably a genius landis is oh, but yeah. he didn't have a perception of of distance right. and so he didn't know how many feet was high enough um weiss did have a, a better conception of it so he said well look here's how tall the hancock building is and landis is like okay well that's about that high then you know and he the two of them weiss the producer landis the director disagreed about exactly how high they dropped it i'm guessing they probably the helicopter is probably a little above the top of the hancock the two you know antennae yeah mm -hmm. and then dropped it you know far enough that the camera could shoot it falling past the entire height of the uh, of the Hancock building crazy yeah